dramatically. And while at the onset that might seem alarming, and it's gonna, it could potentially stay that way for for months, quite literally, years, yeah, years. yeah. I mean, it, it it could it could stay that way for a long, long period of time, and the 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 tendency may be to think, well, there's something wrong here, or I'm going to kill everything. Probably what's going to wind up happening is that if your calcium reactor is being uh, operated as a, as, as a factor of the alkalinity in the system, don't expect your calcium reactor to run for a while. You can do what you did, which is to take your calc washer and run it during the dark cycle and take your um, your calcium reactor and run that during the light cycle because during the dark cycle the pH of your system tends to be depressed until right before the, the, the lights kick on and you're an hour or so into the photo period depending on the, the, the way that you've got your lighting set up and how much coral you have in your tank <laughs> absolutely yeah I mean the and, and this is the other thing and this is some variables that, that, uh, that people um, uh, don't pay a lot of attention to the more the more microbial nutri uh, nutrient uptake your system has, the more acidic the system tends to be. The more the more acid is produced. Take a take a tank that is um, run on a deep sand bed and a lot of live rock, and your pH is going to fluctuate a lot more than the same volume of water with the same coral biomass that's got a scrubber on it, a tur an, an algae turf scrubber, of course, because the algae are um, taking up some of that um, acid that's being produced during the day. There's, there's oxygen being produced the, during the process of photosynthesis. CO2 is being taken up. So yeah, your pH is going to be naturally higher. If you are a person who perpetually has this chronic low depressed pH situation, consider putting a scrubber on your system and go one size or two sizes above whatever size is recommended for your system and just deal with the need to dose more nutrients to keep everybody happy because your pH being elevated as a result of that greater amount of photosynthesis taking place that that capacity for pH neutralization is likely to result in a significant increase in in coral growth and that being the case um, I would encourage you to consider um, that that uh, that aspect of, of incorporating a turf scrubber on your system but the way that you've done it with running the calc washer at night if you're the average um, reef aquarist then you want to run your calc washer at night and you run your calcium reactor during the day if your corals are um, uh, re reducing a lot of the CO2 in the system during the day through photosynthesis, the day is the perfect time to run your calcium reactor because in all likelihood, the effluent of your calcium reactor is slightly acidic. And exactly. so that acidity is being somewhat neutralized by the uh, photosynthesis taking place through the corals. So to run Calcwasser at night and your calcium reactor during the day is a really great solution to... Um, trying to further stabilize the pH. Stability in the pH is what we were looking for. You helped me achieve that with all that we've worked on. That was in 2020 when we started working on that. So we've been, it was three years on November 5th or November 7th was when we started doing all of this. And I remember I had already had my, um, my calcium reactors were already running according to my tridents on my apex. And that was what determined whether the calcium reactor was on or whether it was off. Now, I always have the water running through the calcium reactor at the rate that it always runs through. But I have a separate controller plugged into the energy bar. And then when my Apex Trident does the water test every six hours on the alkalinity, it tells the outlet to be on or tells the outlet to be off that controls the CO2 dose. Right. That was such a huge thing for us when the initial start of this was but my head was still in the old method i mean granted i started dosing cockwasher when i was beginning as a reefer 28 years ago 
And I got away from it, and I don't know why, because I remember my best reef tanks were in the beginning of my reefing career, and as I kept progressing through, they were just not nearly as good as they used to be, and I had com- – now, you know, I was always just pulling my hair out about all the minor issues that we were having, and something wasn't right. We were dosing alkalinity buffer, calcium and and mag- magnesium and i just never could achieve the goals that i had achieved with just straight kalkwasser and it just i'm going to go off on a little tangent here but i'm going to bring up a point of chris cap a friend of mine that was friends with jake adams uh you might know who he is aquatic art he called me after i saw him at reefstock and he goes did you know i had tank of the month on um on on um uh, reef central back in 2002 or something like 2007 i can't remember what it was And I'm like, yeah, what happened? And he's like, I don't know, man. He's like, but I've been listening to all your chats that you have about Kalkwasser. And he's going, damn, Chris. He's like, I used to dose Kalkwasser. I had tank of the month when all I did was Kalkwasser and a calcium reactor. And now I changed to the the normal thing in reefing that was created 20 some years ago that was a money pit for him with his big tank and he ended up crashing his entire aquarium when he switched from calc water and a reactor to a three-part solution and he didn't put two and two together that the problem was was the three-part dosing is what killed his entire aquarium uh-huh. and it's it's playing with fire in my opinion why are we making things more complicated than what they need to be? And why did I go to the newest way of doing things? Because that was what everybody was doing. And I thought that it was the great way to go about it. And then I could never incorporate the caulk washer properly in my systems. And um, I didn't do it because I didn't have the staff that was going to keep, that was going to be looking at that properly and maintaining it. And I was so busy that, um, when you started talking about the other hydroxides in caulk washer, it made total sense to me to just convert back to doing caulk washer and the calcium reactor. And I had converted, I had switched over to calcium reactors on the majority of my systems, especially my farm systems, but I was still doing the three part dosing in my wild systems and my frag system. And it was just a pain in the rear end. And once I got on board with what you were doing and I learned the process on granite my main farm system my wife's like I can't believe you're using this stuff on the main farm system you don't even know what you're doing you could kill everything according to what Chris said I'm like but I'm listening to Chris every step of the way so as long as he's not wrong in his calculations my calls are going to be perfectly fine and of course they were and we incorporated it exactly after I think it was four months of learning the process and my head was able to finally calm down and I wasn't worried about alkalinity anymore. I wasn't worried about calcium anymore. I wasn't worried about magnesium anymore. <laughs> That's what it's I, like. It's like the, the line from Yoda. You must unlearn <laughs> what you, what you have learned. I'm it sure is they're... so true. <laughs> It is so true. And you know what? That's, that's the problem with a lot of the people that want to learn this method is they just – it takes them too long to wrap their head around the fact that they shouldn't be chasing their alkalinity and they shouldn't even worry about their alkalinity unless it falls below where you normally like to keep it. That's what I tell people. Just don't even worry about your alkalinity if you're dosing cockwasser with this method. Mm. Don't worry about your alkalinity going too high. Observe your corals like you told me. How do your corals look, Chris? Right, they right. look – freaking amazing right and you're like okay then why are you worried about a number and yeah, i the said number okay is a, the, the number the, <laughs> the number is a problem man i mean look look for trends you want to be watching the trends you want to be watching yeah. the direction that a parameter is moving from one point in time to the next point in time that you are measuring it how consistent are those results i mean 30 years ago we weren't testing calcium at the same time every day with a digital monitor. We were doing a, a weekly test kit with somebody's test kit, you know, Yep. and then determining from there, what do I need to do? Um, or yep. we did have the benefit of using um, American Marine pinpoint controllers years and years ago for pH control, the old Good kind stuff. that had a plug for the high setting and a plug for the low setting. And uh, I still have one. <laughs> um, I don't Those use it, were the bomb. but I still have one. <laughs> um, <laughs> they were the bomb back in the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you, we had the ability to do that to control what pH was hitting the system. But we weren't looking at it constantly. And 
now you have the ability to look at things constantly and people become so much more focused on the specific value and instead of looking at the trend and then watching the Animals. system yeah the corals definitely are your are your top priority but when you start seeing stuff accumulate or show up in the system that that wasn't there that you can't remember being there yesterday or the day before or a week ago this is why i stress to people take photos of your system take photos of the same corals every week once a week or or however frequently you can and go back in time and look at those photographs because you can't look at a coral today you can but most people yeah. can't look at a coral today <laughs> and remember what it looked like yesterday but for sure if cyano or something like that pops up on a rock and it's in a it's in an obvious area you know or their spouse says hey that wasn't there yesterday was it that's not good um <laughs> Be paying attention to the to the the animals and the appearance of the system at the same time that you're paying attention to the values and watch the trends of the values. If your calcium is trending down, first of all, if it was elevated relative to the salinity value that it should have been, let's say that you're running your salinity at 35 and your calcium was 425, well, your calcium was high. Now, two months later, you're you've been running calcwas for all this time and your salinity is down down around 395. You know, and, and someone's telling no, you... No, you just said calcium value. Your calcium. 395. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your calcium is down at 395. So someone's telling you, oh, dude, your calcium's too low and your salinity <laughs> hasn't changed. But yet your corals are growing <clears throat> like you've never seen them grow before. Are you focused on the value or are you focused on coral growth? The corals, exactly. Yeah. So be mindful of that and that's not just where it pertains to to calcium but every other variable as well everything else in the system that that you're that you're monitoring so uh, yeah that, that's that's really you, such such an you, important thing to keep in mind of well you said that exactly to me you know and it was just so hard for me to understand and wrap my head around because it was so different than what this the, the norm in the reefing world was and you know i think um the, the, the problem with um, numbers is it takes you off the whole point of your aquarium. It's the beautiful animals that are living in it. Right. And, you know, like you told me, your corals will tell you everything you need to know about your system for the most part. If they're not happy, something's wrong. Mm. If they're polyped out like you've never seen them before, then why are you worried about what your numbers are? If your pH is stabilized at, you know, the I like an average of 8.3 mm. and I target, you know, my low, my valley point is 8.28 and my peak is whatever the photo period takes it to. Right. Um, one system, it's 8.32 every single day. It never goes above it. And one system's 8.44 and it never goes above that. And it's very rarely below that at the peak of the day. And I worried about the pH value getting too high. But then I said, wait a minute, I'm looking at my corals. I'm going to forget worrying about that number. I'm going to look at my corals. Are they happy? Is there anything going wrong? Is there everything looking good? Everything was looking great. Okay. Then when my calcium level continued to fall, I remember you saying, are your corals growing? Yes, they're growing like crazy. But my calcium value, there is a threshold for corals if your calcium value does get too low, sure. you know, I was all the way down to like 320 at one point in my main farm where all my acros were. And once I got below that 320 mark, that was when things started to go a little bit wonky. And I started to then chase my calcium level back up. But I had such a hard time getting calcium to stay in solution in the system. I could dump, I could put enough calcium in to raise it normally bef before I had the pH stabilized. I could put enough calcium and that would raise it 30 points and it would raise it five. But then you said, well, that's probably because it was so low, your corals weren't able to lay it down properly in the period of time when they needed to, when, you know, um, when they were laying skeleton down, that is every time you added it, it was being removed immediately because the corals were still happy, but they were just laying down the calcium faster than you were able to put it into the system. Yeah. yeah. And it's a moving target. I mean, all these variables are moving targets, but yeah, you can add a tremendous amount of calcium and, and it doesn't all show up. Right. 
Well, you know, and then on the opposite end of the spectrum there, I've had, cust- I've had um, not customers, but hobbyists that have thanked me for teaching them with the videos on how to do Kalkwasser, and they have brand new aquariums. And this is something I think is very important, something that I didn't really touch base with a whole lot when I first started talking about this whole method, was that new aquariums, you can do this, but you will, and I say you will, emphasizing will see a spike and rise in your calcium levels if the demand is not there oh, for yeah. what's being put into your system. Right. So it's, you know, the way I look at it is you can chase your pH and not worry about your alkalinity and make sure your calcium level doesn't fall below. I like 390. Mm. If it gets to 390, I dose enough to get it back up to the, the, the 410, 420 range. And I've got that dialed in on how I do that um, exactly. And it's usually about once a month. It takes that long for it to fall down that low with all the calc wash that we're dosing and with the calcium reactor running. Again, that's a, probably a very rare situation. Most people aren't going to have the crazy biomass of coral that we have in our systems. But for the hobbyists that do not have the demand, you need to monitor your calcium more regularly because – there is a point when your calcium can be toxic to your system and it's not necessarily going to affect your corals as much as it's going to affect your fish when it gets really high. So, and I want to reiterate, we talked about this in an earlier segment of this discussion, but on the Captivate Aquaculture homepage, there is a calculator for Calcwasser that you can download. It's an Excel spreadsheet. You enter the volume of your system, you enter uh, what your average calcium depletion is per 24 hours, you enter how much water you're evaporating. It'll tell you if your calcium is going to go up or down based right. on how much you could, if you're going to dose a, a saturated solution of Calcwasser, are you going to see the calcium concentration incrementally increase? Um, and uh, yeah, if you're... St- if, if you're starting out Calcwasser on a brand new system that isn't mature and moderately stocked, then anticipate that your calcium concentration is going to increase. But exactly. you know what? On a new system, I would still tell people, do your, do your weekly water changes. Exactly. There, there's a, and, and that'll help bring things back down to the right uh, levels. There's this, and there probably always has been, but there's a substantial number, I think, of people interested in running systems without doing a water change. How I, well, uh, yes, but, the, but for you, it's not, it, it, this is not because you don't want to do water changes. It's because there is a business aspect of it, which has to do with the financial perspective I... of this. But I really don't want to do water changes. <laughs> I, I'm sure. And there are a lot of people out there who, who don't want to I do don't. them either. But if you are a person who doesn't want to do water changes and you've got a mature system, then a three-part is your ticket to needing to do water changes. Exactly. But if you're – if because of the cal, or because of the chloride accumulation, the sulfate accumulation that's going to occur, neither of those um, ions are particularly non-conservative in – a recirculating marine ecosystem. They're going to accumulate. You keep yep. on adding calcium chloride solution or solutions that are chloride based or sulfate based to your system, which is how you're getting those major cations in calcium, magnesium, potassium, strontium, almost without exception are going in there as chlorides. A little bit as sulfates probably in the case of magnesium, but, or they're going in as an organic, which is, a gluconate or an EDTA or something like that. Also something that when you're dosing, if you've got a high calcium demand and you're using a chelated calcium, it, it won't be water. long before, <laughs> before you start seeing the fallout from that, quite literally. Um, so uh, if you want to avoid doing water changes. Calcwasser is going to get you a long way towards that goal, especially with a mature system. Um, so, and there's a, a lot reactor. of other, 
there's a lot of other aspects with not doing water changes as well, which you and I will get into more detail in other segments as we go and move forward with the refagra science. Um, you know, the, the, the key to, I think, any reefer's success is to follow somebody you trust and follow their methods and take their advice and don't mix and match a bunch of different people's ideas together. I mean, because, you know, what we're doing works. It works extremely well. And there's a lot of other things that you can do to maintain your system, and they all do work, but there's consequences to a lot of the other different ways of doing things. Um, from my experience, um, first of all, raw materials um, are very important to have the highest purity you can get, and that is something that mm. I know for a fact you are very adamant about because it shows because – I even double check you once in a while. I'll send samples of the stuff that you send me just to make sure that your suppliers are sending you what you bought. Mm. And I think I came back to you one time in three years. Do you remember the bad batch of Kalkwasser? Vaguely. <laughs> I got Kalkwasser and it was a small batch that you had gotten. You sent it to me and I couldn't get the pH value out of it. Like in the temperature, the water was right. Oh. but. Then Gene took a sample of it and sent and ran it through the ICP and the aluminum level was through the roof. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's not right. That shouldn't be there. And that's when you contacted your, your suppliers and right. figured out that something was wrong there. Right. But um, it, it's very, very adamant. Don't just buy over the, you know, uh, at the, at the food store pickling line to put in your aquarium. <laughs> it, it, it's probably not going to be the best, um, um, calc washer that you could put in there and in time it can build some of the contaminants that are found in a less pure raw material in your system which can eventually cause issues so the fact that you are so adamant about the quality of the materials you're using is so important and it's overlooked by I think um, some some companies but I think it's just misunderstood and you understand it so of course only the best goes into the products you put on the market yeah, I want to make sure that what we're utilizing is uh, the highest possible purity that we can go ahead and get our hands on. And, That's affordable. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean, right. I want AES certified. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's an there's a there's a place where you can't go <laughs> for sure. Uh, where it doesn't, I don't think, make any difference. I mean, once you get beyond a certain number, um, you know, if I can get stuff that's 99.9% .9 pure, then uh, I'm happy. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and and that stuff certainly is out there. So um, I think we're more or less wrapped up with this. Uh, the last, yeah, the last thing that I wanted to cover was the use of the other hydroxides, which is, um, which we've already kind of summarized. Is there anything else that you wanted to uh, add in to this <laughs> I'm just going to finish it off with my normal saying. If you dose cockwasser, your corals will thank you for it. Bottom line. I mean, anybody that wants their corals to be really happy, if you dose cockwasser, you will be observing some very happy corals. I mean, people that could never keep SPS corals alive that I've taught how to do what we do at ACI, they're now keeping SPS corals, and it's been years. I mean, Jay O'Rourke. I mean, that guy had the worst problems with keeping acros. They used to pick on him about his acros because he could buy a $1,000 frag and it would be dead in two weeks and everybody picked on him about it. And now the guy's got some of the most amazing looking SPS corals I've ever seen in his aquarium and he loves to gloat about it because um, he's very proud of all the hard work. That This is the thing. He listened. He was the first person to listen to me. And listen to me in great detail. And he is so successful as a reefer now. And it's been over two. Well, no, it's, it, yeah, it'll be three years next January that I taught him how to do this. So it's over two years that the guy's been able to grow corals. And he sent me a video of his uh, tank when he first started. And I was like, <laughs> and then he sent me one about a month ago. And I was going, Wow. It just blew my mind, and he talks about you. He talks about the ACI method. He preaches it, 
and he's a big contributor to and a, and a perfect example of a success story on the Kalkwasser method. It's not just ACI and what we're doing, but there's so many people out there that can vouch for what we are preaching. You and I are preaching right here on this on this little segment mm. that it will make a world of difference in your system. Yeah. Shout out to Jay. Shout out to Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes, I've had many, many uh, email exchanges with Jay and, and text conversations and so forth. So. Don't you love how the guy just listens and he does it and then he gives you feedback and then you can help him go farther with it and there's never any questioning, never any doubt because he sees it firsthand and he has no reason to doubt it because well, once you start, all doubt goes away. You know, I mean, absolutely. And and But one of the things that I think people ought to take into consideration because there's going to be people who are there's always there's always a side to this whole argument which is you know that that it's not all it's not all that you're growing coral that's what you do for a living you guys have got who knows how much value of coral you know they're they're at the farm it's a tremendous amount it's not just in the monetary aspect of it it's in the um, the heritage aspect of it as well, in terms of what that value is, you you really can't affix a dollar number to that. No. But you're maintaining the systems in a way where those corals are healthier now than they have been prior to incorporating Kalkwasser into all of the systems, and the systems that they've been incorporated into, you're seeing such positive results, and and these are corals that have pedigrees and names, and that people. No yeah, lineage. Yeah, there's yeah. there's some there, there's stuff that people know. You know, they'll look at it and say, "Oh, dude, yeah, I know that coral." I mean, you know, okay, well, how about picture 150 of these sitting in a system, or 500 of them, or I mean, and they're just a piddly amount amongst the rest of the sea of stuff that's inside this one system, and they're all healthier, more colorful, growing more quickly. They're more robust. Um, there's Man. just not a reason not to do it. And pr further, if you have got an apex on your aquarium and it's capable of controlling pH, all you need no is, brainer. A, is a bucket and a dosing pump, a exactly. peristaltic pump, and you're you're on your way. I mean, it's that simple. Uh, exactly. So you know, I mean, it, it is so simple. Um, you know, it it I never I never even observed really how quickly a say Fimbrophilia para encora can grow. Um, I mean, I, I knew that you could get a, you know, a couple polyps and growth out of them every few months, but I'm getting people telling me, asking me how we are getting a single polyp to turn into 25 polyps in just under a year, you know, going from one little stick to a ball this big with 25 beautiful polyps on it. Um, it, it it's actually quite amazing. Um, and people always say to me, well, I don't want my corals to grow any faster. They grow fast enough. I'm like, well, then don't do what we're doing. Mm. Keep doing what you're doing. But if you want to see them look look better than they've ever looked, then do this. If they start growing faster, then, you know, sorry about your luck because a lot of people don't have that issue. Yeah. They, they, they can't grow them fast <laughs> That's enough. That's quite you know? a problem to have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, so so – for anybody that wants to do this, um, it really is simple. And like you said, if you have an apex, it's extremely simple. And even if you don't have an apex, you can do this method with it. it's an easy pH controller and a peristaltic pump. Sure. You know, with a set point to turn your peristaltic pump on and off when the pH is pressed below a certain point. You don't have to have an apex control system to do this. And if you don't have if you don't want to buy the pump or the um, the pH controller, then I've taught people to do it where I say, okay, program your dosing pump to dose your exact evaporation and have your dosing pump program to come on an hour and a half after your lights go out and an hour and a half after your lights come on, stop and have it dose your total evaporation in that 12-hour period. And you're going to achieve basically the same goals that we're achieving, but we're not having a programming for – on off time, we're just having it go randomly as the pH is suppressed right. and when the pH gets back to where it's supposed to be. So that's the only other thing I think we should touch really quickly on is you're going to have 
days when you dose too much and you're going to have days where you don't dose enough. But I've learned in two and a half years of doing this that it all averages out. And if people always say to me, well, if I'm dosing my 24-hour evaporation in 12 hours, I'm dropping my salinity and my salinity is going to fluctuate up and down in that 12-hour or that 24-hour period of time. It's so minute, it, the corals don't care. The fish don't care. It's literally, I, had, I, already, I already figured it out. It's like 0.3 PPT in my system if I dosed exactly my evaporation at nighttime and then when the, the dosing would commence again after the lights go out, the salinity would be back down to the 35.4, 35.5 where we normally keep it. Mm. That little 35.2 to 35.5 swing in a 24-hour period is minuscule. It's not even something to worry about. Again, it's right. a number that you shouldn't even ever think about because it's so minute. Now, pH, on the other hand, because it's logarithmic, <laughs> a 0.2 swing is actually a lot, a quite quite a big swing. Sure. And you know, we have everything down to the point where we get maybe a point. Uh, one system's like a 0.14 swing, and the other systems are between 0.04 and 0.08 eight is all the swing in our pH is and our alkalinity will, will fluctuate by one full point every single day at any given time I mean it could every six hours it could be one point different um, and I don't see any other effects from it my calcium reactor kicks on six hours later it's not where it's supposed to be no point I'm sorry yeah point one wait a minute now I'm getting confused here <laughs> alkalinity no it is point one because it's like point eight to 0.5 to 0.8 on most systems and 0.1 on one of the other systems is a normal fluctuation on a 24-hour period. So my point being is is when your pH is stabilized, that 0.1 swing. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for this extensive, exhaustive discussion on Calquaster. Probably a lot of information that you had some questions on, a lot of things that you probably didn't have questions on, but nonetheless, it's, it's all, it's all interesting information. And, um, uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. And we will see you again on the next, um, segment of reef science with myself and Chris. Thank you guys so much for listening and, um, ask us as many questions as you want and we'll do our best to answer them on the next episode. All right. All right. Bye -bye. Thanks.